Hello again, I'm Robert Fifth, and this is just another quick video of some vinyl finds that I have acquired recently. Uh, all different genres in this video. We'll start off with some nice uh, R&B here. This is uh, Millie Jackson and her album Caught Up from 1974. This is quite an album. This kind of captures Millie Jackson in kind of a transitional mode between more kind of more straightforward R&B like she did in It Hurts So Good, the album before this, and or a couple before this, and then the later stuff from the 80s where she's just straight up almost doing stand-up comedy routines, and with her sitting on the toilet on the cover, and the album's called Back to the Shit, and she's talking about farting on stage. It's, it's, we don't need that. Uh, this is, this is a good one, though. Uh, this one, she's got some serious attitude in this album. I love the album artwork, too, with the, uh, with the spider web there and she's all caught up and then the back of it basically just repurposes the photo from it hurts so good but she's got a spider web like you know uh, it's your fault she's got a screen or phone calls she's caught up in the spider webs uh but yeah millie jackson caught up attitude all over this album especially side one that starts off with the cover of luther ingram's if loving you is wrong I don't want to be right. Also, Barbara Mandrell did that song. That's actually the version that I grew up with. But here Millie Jackson does it, and it's like a 10-minute long, 11-minute long version. She does the song, and then she goes into this 6-minute long, uh, it's called The Rap. She goes into this 6-minute long dialogue, where she, actually monologue, where she's talking about, like, you know, you oh, hey, you know, I, I, I love being in a relationship with a married man. There's so many advantages. He comes and brings me money. I got to set the clock when he comes over and have the alarm go off so he's not late for getting home and I don't have to wash his nasty drawers <laughs> she actually says that I'm not making this up she goes on and on and on drops a slur so just be aware of that and um yeah she's all about being uh, going out with this married man and then she, she then she meets the wife on the street and she's like hey just so you know I'm the I'm the woman that's been uh uh going out with your man on the side and uh, so I guess that makes us wives in law and the woman's like what the hell are you talking about wives-in-law and yeah she just you know you're gonna have to bring your army or your navy or whatever military you got and fight for your man and it, it goes on to this whole thing it's like i said it's a monologue so it's all millie jackson but uh quite the uh version of if loving you is wrong uh i don't want to be right there that is followed up with all i want is a fighting chance and i'm tired of hiding so side one is like a whole concept about she's this she's this uh you know woman that's going out with this married man she's all fine with it song one song two She's getting tired of it. She, she wants a fighting chance. You know, she's going to fight. And then song three, she's tired of it. Uh, she wants him to make a decision. So it, it goes through the whole, like, uh, the whole ordeal there from beginning to, to end. Side two is a little more straightforward. Uh, some, some more of a ballad kind of R&B there. But she's still uh, got a little bit of attitude in there. It kind of starts to wane towards the end. And then she goes full on and does, ends the album uh, completely removing the attitude by doing a Goldsboro cover and no it is not honey I miss you and I hope you're doing good and the angels came and all that this is actually called summer the first time where she's on the front porch swing and she's 17 years old and the guy's 31 and uh I, you knew all about love I didn't know a thing you know and all that kind of stuff and I became a woman that day in the park Millie Jackson caught up. I definitely recommend this. The sound of this is really good too. This has got a really excellent kind of sound quality. It sounds like just like you want great 70s R&B to sound very clear. Bass is great. Vocals are right up front. Sounds like she's right there. You know, a very clean recording and very well done. And for collectors, you know, if you're on Discogs all the time and you're, you're interested in things like that, this one's kind of noticeable. It's on Spring Records. This, I could not find this pressing on Discogs, though. It has one spring logo on one side, and then the other side has a different spring logo. So this was probably pressed right smack dab in the middle of them uh, changing logos. So that, that version is not on Discogs. I don't know if this is like a one of a kind, but, uh, you know, side one and side two having uh, different logos. This is the earlier one. This is the later one. So yeah, Millie Jackson... Uh, she caught up switching gears completely now to Alice in Chains. Uh, yeah, from 1994, January of 1994, to be more precise, is uh, the Jar of Flies and Sap combo on a uh, European release. This is the first pressing of this where they did these back to back for the first time. And I got this, of course, at an estate sale for five dollars. Came home, you know, put it in my uh, discogs and found out that this thing has a median price of like two hundred dollars. Doesn't matter anyway i'm definitely not selling this i'm 
keeping this for myself. Doesn't matter if it's $200 or $5 or whatever. But yeah, the gatefold and the uh, color of vinyl sap is uh, blue and uh, jar of flies is orange. And uh, yeah, so really, really cool stuff um, from Alice in Chains. I, over the years, I think this has actually become my uh, favorite Alice in Chains uh, release. Um, it's, it's a little on the mellow side, obviously, if you've heard it. Uh, you know that it was quite a change up for them to do these uh, EPs like this. And I actually heard uh, Jar of Flies before I heard Sap. Sap came out in uh, 92. Uh, and I was kind of surprised, like, wow, this is Alice in Chains. Is the whole thing going to sound like this? And sure enough, it does. It's it's almost acoustic, but not really. There's definitely electric guitar in there, but it is a, definitely a more mellow sound for them. And like I said, over the years, this I just listened to this again uh, a couple of times, and this has become my favorite Alice in Chains album at this point. So, um, I, you know, controversial take, hot take here, get ready. I was never really a big fan of the Man in the Box song with... Ah, ah, I never really cared for that song, but I'm listening to this, and uh, especially I Stay Away. Man, I, I got a little verklempt listening to that. I'm not going to lie. I really brought back some memories of uh, early days in college radio, and then um, this was right in my transition from college radio to actually having a job in commercial radio, uh, my first job at a uh, rock station. And I remember uh, that's when Got Me Wrong became a big rock uh, radio staple, uh, and it was a, it was a quote, new song. And I'm telling the DJs, the other DJs, yeah, because they're going on the air going, the brand new one from Alice in Chains from the Clark soundtrack. And I'm telling them, you know, actually that's an older song that was on the, uh, the Sap EP. And right away I start making enemies. Who's this snotty kid that thinks he knows everything? Well, I, I just didn't want you to be wrong on the air and uh, thousands of people listening, but okay, you do you. But uh, Alice in Chains, <laughs> Jar, Jar of Fly and Sap, I've got the first uh, issue of the CD uh, in here too with the with the flies and the spine, little plastic flies. And somebody was saying they're going to reissue this with, with the plastic flies in, in the vinyl. Um, the, the, oh, rock on with that. But um, yeah, this is an actual original from uh, 94. Really glad I got this. And now I have just about every Alice in Chains original on... Uh, on vinyl. I'm not a, I keep saying that I'm not a really big fan of 90s vinyl. 90s to me are CDs, but yet I keep getting these. It, it doesn't... I guess what I am is I'm not a really big fan of reissues that are basically 90s albums that are being put on. I mean, and a lot of people are into that. I'm just not. I think of the 90s, I think of CDs. That's what I have. That's what I listened to at the time. That's what a lot of these were made for. But I couldn't pass this up for $5. And especially this album, it's, it's, it sounds really good on vinyl because it's so warm sounding. It's so much of an, an, an acoustic vein. But uh, over the years, I was definitely more familiar with Jar of Flies than I was Sap, but this is still a great, uh, great to have these together. I uh, love finding out that Ann Wilson from Heart actually backed uh, Alice in Chains up on a couple of tracks on here. And of course, you have the Alice Mud Garden song uh, on here where it's uh, Mark Arm from Mud Honey and Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is a uh, terrific, uh, uh, jar of flies and sap from Alice in Chains sounding a little bit country, especially on songs like don't follow, uh, no excuses. Obviously the big song on jar of fly, love brother on sap to got me wrong, all those, but yeah, I stay away. It sounds a little bit country. So let's move on to some actual country now with Bobby Gentry and uh, local Gentry is the album. A lot of people know her from her song, uh, Ode to Billy Joe, which is, of course, on the Ode to Billy Joe album. Uh, and then she actually had the original version of the song Fancy that Reba McIntyre covered and turned into a huge hit. That is not on here either, but this is still a great album from Bobby Gentry. I've always liked her and her real, like, just unadulterated, un un unapologetic country down-home sound. She's basically a storyteller. Uh, my favorite song on here is, is the Casket song, the second song on side one. I've loved that song since I had it on a, on a compilation uh, for 25 years. But, the, you know, the Miss Morgan goes in and her husband's dead, and, but she's not crying. And the woman can't figure out why. It's, it's sung from the perspective of the woman or the person, I guess, running the funeral home and offering all these things. And, and Miss Morgan really couldn't care less. And she just leaves and... <laughs> I've always loved that song. This is a pretty good album too. And she and don't worry if you if you don't have this, but you love Bobby Gentry. Yes, there are chickens. There's a prize hog. 
The hog gets hurt though, so that's not very cool. But yeah, there a lot of great uh, storytelling songs on here. The only misfire, the only the only downside to this album is she's got three Beatles covers on here. And Eleanor Rigby, I think, really works for her. But The Fool on the Hill and Here, There, and Everywhere, I don't really think go with Bobby Gentry. Um, but um, they're on here. Um, but yeah, three different Beatles covers. And uh, she does another cover on here. And the rest are all Bobby Gentry. And of course, the Bobby Gentry written songs. Those are the highlights. I wish she would have just written the whole album. She's, uh, she's just so talented at that. And then telling her own stories or whatever in song. But yeah, if you'd like Ode to Billy Joe, you've got that album or just know the song, want some more. I would definitely suggest this, but really any of her 60s albums are just great. But this one's got this awesome cover. I love the big red, you know, the big red getup she's got on there. That just, uh, with the blue background, I think it's just a terrific uh, album cover. And then uh, the back as well, nowhere saying Bobby Gentry. Just says local gentry. So uh, a great album from uh, 1968. Now, you know with a Vinyl Finds video of mine, there's got to be some sort of psych record or garage rock on here and this time it's the chocolate watch band this is the best of the chocolate watch band uh this is actually a 1983 compilation i believe this is the first time their uh, songs were compiled done by rhino records and it sounds terrific of course it's rhino so you would expect that but the sound quality on here is uh it's pretty good for uh you know just your garage rock band from the uh mid late 60s uh from the uh, west coast they are from california and uh, they were featured in the movie riot on sunset strip but uh, that's pretty much what they were known i think most for that and their name the chocolate watch band now i mentioned their name before earlier in a video but i've never i don't think actually shown a record from them so i thought i would uh, do that since i just picked this one up and of course the chocolate watch band got their name from well you know it's something to do with a strip search put it that way uh, but yeah, that's, that's apparent. That's the rumor. That's what the chocolate watch band is all about. And a lot of great, uh, rocking songs on here. I didn't expect this to be as good as it was, but yeah, their, 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 their stuff's pretty good. I was familiar with a couple of songs like, are you going to be there at the love in? Uh, are you going to be there you know, when I make my move? You know, that kind of thing. Let's talk about girls starts it off. Not very psychedelic, but definitely in a garage rock type of way. A bunch of guys hanging out in the garage talking about girls. Uh, they've got the tender moments. Not a ballad, but they, they try to be kind of tender on songs like Misty Lane, you know, so they, they've got that. But mostly it's just good, good, good hard garage rock. The uh, There is kind of a psych uh, instrumental on here that's uh, really cool called Expo 2000. And then the song No Way Out ends with a really nice uh, backwards, uh, you know, the whole, the, all the music, the drums, guitar and everything's backwards. Sometimes that doesn't work re really well, but on that particular song, it uh, they do a pretty uh, good job of that. So, uh, like I said, sound quality is great on everything except for the couple of songs from the movie Riot on Sunset Strip. Uh, and they even apologize for that somewhere on here, talking about, you know, we tried to get the master tapes and blah, 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 but we couldn't. And Riot on the Sunset Strip, if you've never seen it, there's the DVD. This was back in the days when uh, DVDs were still popular, but if you wanted movies like this, you had to special order them. They were called MOD, uh, Manufactured On Demand Movies, and they were a little more expensive, but I used to collect these things uh, way back, and uh, yeah, Riot on the Sunset Strip uh, from 1967, starring Aldo Ray and Mimsy Farmer, among others, and uh, yeah, just one of those uh, American International kind of drive-in, you know, kind of movies. I always think it's funny because the American International movies, and there's so many of them, uh, they're all, most of them are just great to sit and just grab a big bowl of popcorn or, and, and maybe some other stuff and, uh, just check these out. But, um, yeah, the, the thing that's great about these is they were sold to, or all the American international pictures were sold to Orion pictures in the nineties. So a few of them turned up on VHS, but then Orion movies were all sold to MGM. So by the time the DVDs all started coming out, these were all MGM releases, so I always thought it was hilarious to see this big MGM lion roaring like you're going to watch some big major Hollywood production, and then an American international movie comes on like right on Sunset Strip. But this is uh, your typical thing from the day, and uh, the, the story goes with, uh, you know, this girl is trying LSD for the first time, but a lot of great, you know, visuals from, I, I'm, I don't know if it actually is the Sunset Strip, or I think it is. And the bands and the hippies hanging out and the clubs and all that. That's that's a lot of the movie. But the plot is the girl, they get her they get her on acid for the first time. They get her in this big house and she starts freaking out. Actually, she starts dancing around. And that goes on for quite a while. And then, unfortunately, the guys take advantage of her. 
uh, and uh, which is immoral, of course, but also kind of stupid when it's the daughter of the chief of police. So two reasons not to do that. But yeah, uh, Mimsy Farmer, Aldo Ray, two of my favorite people in the same movie, uh, Riot on uh, Sunset Strip. So yeah, kind of hard to find on DVD, but you had to get the, you had to have it specially made back in the, uh, back in the early 2000s. But anyway, back to the Chocolate Watch Band. They are in that movie, not just on the soundtrack, they're performing in that movie. And you can tell when they're doing the songs, the lead singer is up there. I mean, talk about moves like Jagger. This guy obviously wants to be Mick Jagger. And just listening to this record again, you can even hear him try to sound like Mick Jagger, but he's definitely trying to ape Mick Jagger with all with all the moves that Mick Jagger had back in like maybe 65, but he's just now picking up on them in 67, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, great uh, great album here, great compilation. I, I, I never see their originals anywhere, so this is like a, I don't know, like a 10 or $12 album, so th this is a cheap way to get a lot of the good stuff on a record from the Chocolate Watch Band, and even get an unreleased, uh, so previously unreleased song called Milk Cow Blues. You know, not their best, but, you know, it's, it's this is one of the ways to get it on a record. So, yeah, the best of the, uh, the Chocolate Watch Band, the band from Riot on Sunset Strip. And so next up, I bet you didn't see this one coming, some jazz. I very rarely sow jazz records uh, as vinyl finds, but I couldn't pass this up. Now with that cover... That woman's got a uh, lock on her, Virginia. This is a uh, sophisticated funk. It's very, very sophisticated, as you can tell. From uh, Jack McDuff. This is on Chess Records from 1976. I have shown this album cover before in a video about ridiculous album covers, but I just showed a JPEG. I didn't actually have the album. Now I do, thanks to the Collinsville record show where I picked this. I mean, I couldn't pass that up. Come on, how are you going to pass that up? I wonder how many uh, people have asked this woman for her number, by the way. Uh, it's 7512. Don't forget to hit the pound sign. Uh, but yeah, it, it's okay. She she gets free there, it, you know, at one point. So somebody either had a had the, had the passcode or jimmied it. My jimmied that lock. <laughs> or picked it. Or pricked it. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, sophisticated. Very, very sophisticated. That means it's jazz funk. Because jazz is synonymous with uh, sophisticated Yes, that's what jazz is. This sounds, you know, it's got the flute going on. It's got the little wah-wah guitar in the first couple of tracks. Uh, but this mostly sounds like porn music from the 70s. You know, with the flute. Some of it's okay. Um, you know, there's a, I could make all kinds of jokes, but this thing jokes itself. There's a song on here called Mini Pads. I'm not bullshitting. It's the second song on side two mini pads and the joke is it's like the best song on here it's definitely the most lively song on here most of it's pretty just laid back kind of jazzy like flutes going on and whatever thankfully there's no horns or anything like that but you got a little keyboard like a smooth jazz like i said I like porn music but some of it sounds more like it's not good enough to be like in the porn so it's just the music that plays when they talk about the soft core stuff coming up like this this would be playing you'd hear something like you know Coming up tonight, it's international superstar Sylvia Crystal and Emmanuel, part two. And then, you've never seen a fairy tale like this before. Cheryl Rainbow Smith ignites the screen in the erotic adventures of Cinderella, only on Select TV. Yeah, it sounds like it goes uh, behind something like that. Uh, Jack McDuff, Sophisticated Funk from 1976. It's an album cover. That's exactly what this is. Uh, we go from uh, this to some Little Feet. <laughs> of course. Uh, Southern Rock here. This is actually a compilation double album from uh, 1981. And uh, even though this is a bunch of uh, like alternate versions and outtakes, and I think there's a couple live tracks on here as well. And then there's just a couple of regular versions that there are from the album. So it's, it's kind of a compilation. It's just kind of all over the place. But it really does make a nice, cohesive listen. It's called Hoy Hoy. Um, I'm not really sure what that means. Maybe that's like a Louisiana thing or Dixie thing or something like that. But uh, great cover art there. The dog has antlers for some reason. And, you know, in, in their tradition, they've got a shoe with eyes. But, yeah, Little Feet and Hoy Hoy, uh, a pretty interesting release. If you've got all the Little Feet, the early stuff um, with Lowell George, and you, you're looking for something that's kind of different... This is a really good listen all the way through, even though it's kind of like an outtakes, rarities, live tracks compilation. It's a decent listen all the way through, and I really never really see this a lot of places, so it's kind of rare. Not not expensive at all, so Little Feet fans, this might uh, 
you might want to dig into this. Hoi Hoi. Uh, like I said, 1981, this came out on Warner Brothers, and there's also previously unreleased tracks on here, too, that you can't get uh, elsewhere on other Little Feet albums, like their cover of Hank Williams' I Heard That Long, wah, wah, Some Whistle Blow, that's on here, as well as a demo of China White and uh, their version of the Lieber Stroller song, or Lieber Stroller song, Framed that everybody's done from the coasters all the way to Cheech and Chong. I didn't do nothing to nobody. Every time I get the blame, I got framed. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that is on here as well as an alternate version of Rock and Roll Doctor. They've got uh, a demo version of uh, Teenage Nervous Breakdown that goes right into a live version of that. So all kinds of cool stuff on here. Like I said, uh, it makes for a great listen all the way through. It doesn't sound like a, a hodgepodge. It just sounds more like a montage, if you will. Uh, put together pretty well. Hoy Hoy from uh, Little Feet. Definitely uh, Little Feet fans uh, seek that one out. And finally, I'm not sure how to categorize his music, kind of neo-crooner kind of rockabilly sound that he had. I was a huge uh, into these first few Chris Isaac albums. I kind of jumped off the Chris Isaac train right around the San Francisco Days album. What I really liked was was the whole like mood of the music and everything, especially the guitar sound. Uh, with, when uh, James Calvin Wilsey was with them, and uh, he, of course tragically passed away Christmas Eve of uh, 2018. But um, when he was with the Chris Isaac Silvertone group, uh, that was what I was really into. I am just a fool for that whole like uh, vibrato particular sound that they had and uh, tremolo, that kind of far away guitar thing. I absolutely love that. And it's all over this album. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of the first album, Silvertone. Uh, I think it's got a few more standout kind of songs. This one kind of is very similar throughout. It's got some really great ones on here, like Blue Hotel and Waiting for the Rain to Fall, which closes it. But uh, yeah, his second album uh, from 1987, great music to take like a like a 2 a.m. lonely drive on a long stretch with. I have I've had the CD of this since like 91, and used to I've done that quite a few times. It's it's kind of hard to take a drive with a record though, so I probably won't be uh, driving around with this record that I just got. But yeah, Chris Isaac's uh, second one. Glad to have this on uh, vinyl. Uh, finally, after, you know, decades of having the CDs and, uh, yeah, just, uh, really always liked his, his whole sound more than, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like uh, albums that are just basically a collection of love songs. I couldn't, I can't really care about the lyrics or whatever and saying I'm lonely and, but, uh, I think it goes well with the music. And I remember, um, remember the Chris Isaac show on Showtime? Uh, that kind of came in. I used to watch that all the time too. He's, he's kind of a good actor and he was a whole like you know, personality kind of guy, and uh, he, um, uh, he was on the, you know, he had the Chris Isaac show with the different guests on there, and it was, but it was more like a situation comedy, but it would also feature the band playing music, and it had his actual band members in it, and uh, it came and went, I mean, you, I don't think you can stream that anywhere for a long time, and it's not really, I don't know if it's ever really been on DVD, or it's definitely not on Blu-ray or anything like that, it must be something with music licensing or something, but uh, that was a great show when it was out, I used to watch that all the time, wish they would bring that back in some capacity so we could all watch it again. But yeah, Chris Isaac, second album, really good. Uh, you know, David Lynch used a lot of his early music for the movies, and uh, you can see why. It's very atmospheric. Like I said, that guitar tone, uh, everything about it. Uh, so yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, definitely pick this up. This guy's got a really long neck. Look at that. That is that what they mean by pencil neck? That's uh, crazy. I've heard rumors about other parts of Chris Isaac's anatomy, but we won't uh, get into that. But yeah, those are my, uh, recent vinyl finds. Uh, like I said, all kind of all over the place. Hopefully there's, uh, you know, something for somebody has got something out of this. I like them all really. Well, the, the, the McDuff album, I kind of really just wanted the cover, but yeah, the rest of them, uh, you know, love the music on all of them, all the different, uh, styles and genres and subgenres and everything. So hopefully you uh, got something out of this video and we'll go check some of these out. And uh, thank you so much again for watching. I'm Robert Fitton, and hopefully I will talk to you again soon.